So today I'm going to introduce you to your liver. I'm going to explain how your liver works on the inside and how it's connected to your kidneys, your gallbladder, your lymphatic system, and your vascular system, or your heart. So inside your liver, we're going to say that there's two conveyor belts. Now this conveyor belt represents the P450 cytochromic enzyme system, which is basically how your liver uses enzymes to take what's coming into the liver apart and put it into things that we can use or into things that might be uh, relatively toxic. And in the second conveyor belt, which covers six different kinds of methylation and uh, deconjugation of the toxins your liver produces naturally in the process of just clearing out your blood. So the first thing you should be aware of is that all the blood that's coming into your liver comes into your liver through your portal vein. And that portal vein attaches into your stomach, your small intestine, your large intestine, your spleen. Uh, and it's basically bringing in all of that tissue, the food, the wastes, the bacteria, uh, hormones, things like that. And in fact, the blood coming into your portal vein through your liver or just coming into your liver is actually black and four times thicker than normal vascular blood because it's so full of really fun things for your liver to do. So if we look at conveyor belt number one, and I use the term conveyor belts because the kind of point is that they have to be going at the same speed or things can get kind of messy. So for conveyor belt number one, if you actually say have coffee, caffeine every day, it's gonna speed up that conveyor belt quite a bit. If you have alcohol more than is recommended, and nowadays I think the recommendation is two or three servings a day, which seems a little bit permissive, uh, at that level of alcohol consumption, even two or three servings a day, you're gonna speed up this conveyor belt quite a bit, if not quite a lot. Also, if you're not eating a lot of multicolored vegetables, roots, uh, seasonal local fruit, uh, you're not going to be getting enough of the antioxidants, bioflavonoids, uh, you know, vitamins, minerals, things like that, that this conveyor belt needs. So it's going to speed up some more. So if you were to take a little drop of blood from your portal vein here, and it's going to come through this first conveyor belt, and it's going to get changed from this black, sticky, gooey stuff into something that's actually good for you. Big happy face and some things that may actually be really hard for your body to deal with. So try and draw my scariest looking monster. Right, so these are what we call reactive oxygen species, free radicals, things like that. And they're really, really toxic to your body. Luckily, this is a normal process. So if we look at conveyor belt number two, this conveyor belt needs quite a bit of protein. It needs some saturated fat. It needs uh, bitter alkaloids in certain plant foods that we eat. Uh, you're also going to see the bitter alkaloids in the medicines we use for your liver like dandelion root, burdock, milk thistle, things like that. So we need some of those things at least, uh, say, seasonally like springtime. Back in the day, historically, we'd be eating those kind of roots because there'd be nothing left to eat. So our livers learn to be dependent on those alkaloids. So proteins, fats, the alkaloids, all make that conveyor belt go that way. If you don't have those things in your diet, plus some other uh, very specific nutrients, this conveyor belt actually slows down quite a bit. And that's a bad thing, as you can imagine, because if this conveyor belt is going too fast, making a lot of these guys, this conveyor belt is going too slow, then these guys don't uh, have the same opportunity to be cleared out of your body. Because in fact, your second conveyor belt's job is to take these guys and turn them into something good for you and something you would call inert are no longer chemically reactive to your body. In fact, these are considered to be fat-soluble toxins. These are considered to be water-soluble wastes. So they can just be eliminated normally throughout your body. So very quickly, that's your liver. That's how it works on the inside. So let's say that this is happening, your typical standard American diet lifestyle. This conveyor belt's going you know, three, four times faster than it's supposed to. This one's almost going backwards. You can imagine that you're gonna get a pile so again, as you can imagine, your liver is going to fill up with these guys, kind of like a big pile of homework for this conveyor belt here. And this conveyor belt can only, you know, catch up as fast as you feed it or take care of it. So the first thing you're going to see happen is a lot of these things are going to get stored as lipid peroxides. Again, lipid meaning fat and peroxides is a certain kind of toxin. So um, what you're going to see is these toxins are actually going to go out into your gallbladder and cause more caustic bile or even gallstones. And caustic bile doesn't have to have stones, but when you secrete the bile when you eat some fat, the caustic bile actually irritates the lower membrane of your, uh, pardon me, the upper part of your small intestine, 
which can actually make your stomach spasm. And it's one of the most common causes of what we call GERD, uh, gastroesophageal reflex disorder, which people usually call heartburn. Now imagine again, caustic bile, muscle spasm, stomach acid coming up. And the usual thing is get rid of the stomach acid with drugs. And that's obviously not gonna help uh, with this kind of condition. So uh, that's gonna happen. Some of the bad guys can go into your lymphatic system, uh, which is gonna turn your immune system into a slightly more uh, aggressive version of itself. Uh, you're gonna feel like you have chronic sinus infections, um, upper respiratory tract problems and stuff like that. So that's not great. Um, good news is even if this is happening, the good guys get into your bloodstream, go to your heart, go to your cells. So we're still okay, we're just needing to do a bit of a cleanse. Now, again, so it's going through your gallbladder and going through your lymphatic system. The next thing that's gonna happen is it's gonna get basically dumped into your kidneys and your kidneys aren't designed to deal with the kind of toxins that your liver is designed to work, to work with. So your kidneys really don't have a very successful uh, way of doing that bit of a homework for your liver. And unfortunately what happens for most people is once your kidneys get tired, they dump it into the largest tissue organ of your body, which is your skin, causing things like psoriasis, eczema, uh, some complex autoimmune things, and even acne. So that can happen too. So this is your opportunity to do your best to take care of your liver by less caffeine, less alcohol, more vegetables. I know you've heard that from everybody who does any, any kind of medicine. Um, <clears throat> and or take antioxidant, uh, bioflavonoid, multimineral, uh, multivitamin supplements to support your liver. Eat enough protein, try not to overcook it. Uh, eat abundant and saturated fat, again, don't overcook it. Uh, if you need to, take some bitter alkaloids like dandelion root, milk thistle, things like that. And nowadays, we're lucky we can get really, really targeted uh, what are called nutraceuticals, things like um, uh, glutathione or precursors for that, which would be N-acetylcysteine. And I could go on and on and on, but I just wanted to quickly introduce you to your liver, say hello, and give you some opportunities to take care of it by understanding basically how it works, what can go wrong, and typically what to do about it. So thanks for watching. Again, my name is Michael Smith. I practice integrative medicine by combining functional medicine, nutritional medicine, and Chinese medicine. Uh, so hope you're enjoying the videos I'm putting out. Uh, please like and share this video. Uh, it really helps other people get access to the information. And if you can, take a minute and uh, put a comment on the YouTube channel uh, or a question so I've got something else to, to uh, speak about on the video series. And as well, if you can, subscribe to the channel because, well, that's what we're all supposed to do. So have a great day. Thanks for watching.